Hey, what's going on, guys? Alamazi here, and today we're going to be talking about the 9.2 PTR Warlock tier changes that were made today for Affliction, Demonology, and Destruction. I, I guess actually they were mentioned, but they weren't made today. So these changes should actually be active in next week's PTR build. Blizzard mentioned that these changes are going to be pushed then. We had a few bosses tested yesterday in Mythic, being Skolex and the Sausage. And today we had uh, Zyronic, Zymox, which really wasn't testable actually, it was sort of buggy. And they canceled Lee Vim testing. So I would assume that they're going to probably retest Zymox and have Lee Vim available, you know, at some point in the near future. So it looks like we're going to have most of these set bonuses changed for, I guess, the remainder of Mythic testing, which also I would assume was not going to include the final two bosses or final three because, you know, uh, the final boss is never tested on Mythic. But I think it's pretty clear at this point, Blitz is probably not testing the final three on Heroic at all because they jumped into Mythic testing their first week back from the holidays. So today we're going to be discussing all those. Uh, uh, spoilers ahead, I guess spoilers, but I I'm a pretty big fan of all the changes. Uh, a lot of it seems to be like, you know, uh, from the Warlock you know, forums, uh, feedback wise, from the document, from a lot of places that, you know, there's like a general consensus on what needed to change. And for the most part, it looks like Blizz really took that into account. I'm excited to see how they end up playing out in well, next week's PTR build. If you guys want to discuss any changes or talk about them or any questions, if you have any or want to grab any week or as uh, heads up, you can swing them by my Twitch. They're all indeed available to you there for free. Uh, and yeah, we can have some more in-depth discussions there as well. Also, one more thing before we get into the video. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you a million times, guys, for all support. Uh, heads up, the 9.2 Warlock PTR document slash spreadsheet spreadsheet uh, should be going up this weekend. Uh, the tier three Felgar rank my patron higher does indeed get early access to that. I've sort of been waiting for them to put loot in the actual raid, but even though it's still not there, we probably know enough about tier and trinkets and things, and basically all the bosses have been tested uh, to start there. So with that being said, let's get into the video, starting off with Affliction. Okay, so I figure we'll jump into this, just talk about each change, two piece, four piece, and then just uh, some interactions, things like that. And I'll give my overall thoughts on all of them. So number one, uh, greetings Warlocks. Thank you for your patience and apologies for the wait with regards to an update on the tier set bonuses coming in 9.2. I'm just glad we got a blue post in general. I will take it. Um, we've been waiting, we've been watching the discussions happening on and off the forums surrounding the Warlock bonuses and appreciate all the feedback, sure. We've made some changes to the tier set bonuses that should help each mesh better with their respective specializations uh, toolkit. Without further ado, here are the changes you see in the next PTR build. So I will say right now, the affliction one is worded. It, it, it's sort of like presented awkwardly, but you know, we'll talk about that. So uh, the current two piece, four piece, electric rapture damage is increased by 15% and each cast extends the duration of corruption, agony and UA by two seconds. So Nothing changed there. Same three dots are extended. There's no Phantom Singularity, Siphon Life interactions here. All the same, same percent increase to Rapture damage. Nothing usually changed here. This is the current bonus, right? Four piece, just three hash as well. Well, Agony, Corruption, and UA are all active on your target or a target, I guess. Maybe just in general, actually. It is in general. Um, your Shadow Bolt has a 20% chance to make your next Malefic Rapture cost no soul shards and cast instantly. Basically being, hey, you can cast it instantly, right? Because you control the actual cast. So, the changes that they made for the two piece. Now, I want to say this is in addition to this. I, they didn't really put that here, but um, yeah, it probably should have been indicated somewhere. So when Malefic Rapture extends absolute corruption, which is not really extendable, but I mean, you know, you know what they're getting at because right, they want some value behind playing absolute corruption. It instead causes the target to take damage equivalent to a tick of corruption. Now, this is a pretty cool change because Currently on PTR, corruption, absolute corruption is bugged with the two piece. Whenever you rapture, it'll like override the permanent effect of the corruption and give it a two second duration and then it expires. So we tried to play it on a couple fights, uh, like like Pantheon and things during testing. It was pretty awkward, but I assume they just fix it and make it permanent, right? But it's cool to see them looking at, okay, this tier bonus doesn't really work very well, well with AC, which might be played this tier. So the one tick of corruption is not incredibly impactful but it's better than nothing right um now currently in like two target settings rather than agony is a little better than ac from what i've seen in things and i don't necessarily expect this to like you know push uh, ac ahead of writhe we'll see where sims are in two targets in three four target settings with you know good ac value this could very well be you know relevant 
like on the final phase of Pantheon, for example, depending where that goes. So solid change. I'm happy with this. A cooler thing to add it onto it. So basically a two piece is this plus this, although I don't expect this to be you know, included in the actual tooltip. So the four piece for affliction. Drain Soul's chance to proc a free Malefic Rapture was increased from 4% to 10%. Now, if you guys watched the actual video I put out a couple weeks ago on uh, Night Fae versus Necrolord Sims, Necrolord Malefic Wrath Double Legendary Affliction playing Shard of Annihilation and Malefic Wrath is ahead of Night Fae Malefic Wrath by about like a thousand DPS or so. And the Necrolord version plays Drain Soul versus the Nightfay one playing Nightfall because Nightfall is actually better with the bonus or I guess was because Shadowbolt cast proc it a lot more often. So I would assume, I think this, this buff should bring it in line proc rate wise with uh, Shadowbolt's cast. It might actually be a little bit higher, <clears throat> excuse me, at this point than Shadowbolt's cast, but either way, it, it's, it's pretty solid. So moving on from that, uh, Solid changes, good overall. Drain Soul's relevant again, probably just playing it as your universal filler. Um, I will say the one thing they did not address with this bonus or changes is the issue in PvP that people have brought up. I don't do much for PvP, but they've mentioned that the four piece is pretty irrelevant because you're not casting many Shadow Bolts or a whole lot of Drain Souls in PvP because it's an LOS fest. Now, I don't PvP, like I said, I don't even want to get into that, but that is one thing that I was hoping that would be addressed. My suggestion during like on the feedback document was maybe make it like, you know, based off of unstable affliction in UA ticks, giving you a chance to uh, proc a free rapture cast. But at the same time in arenas, you have, uh, I think endless afflictions. It gives you three UAs. So I, I don't really know a good way to work this in arenas. I, I honestly don't. Um, just bringing that up to, hey, yeah, if you guys wanted arena help, you probably didn't get it with this change, but uh, yeah. I don't know what to say. As far as PVE is concerned, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's fine. Two piece, got a bit of a change here, a little bit of relevancy, but I mean, this is solid. Besides this, the app bonus is, is legit. I think it's pretty solid, I guess, right? I wouldn't mind some changes here and there, but you know, I'll, I'll take it. It's better than nothing. So uh, I, I'd i say overall app bonus right now, six and a half, seven out of 10, solid is fine. App itself could probably use a little bit of buffs here and there. Probably some dot damage buffs, but we'll see where that goes, right? So moving on. Demonology. Now, Demonology is the spec we have played on PTR for basically all of testing besides Pantheon because it's number one, our only good spec at this point. And number two, I mean, the bonus is buggy and the four piece is doing a lot more damage than it should be. My main concern with Demonology, though, was when they fixed the tier, which I assume they would, was that I didn't want them to change the two piece with the guaranteed third dog. So, we currently know, yep, two piece, 100% uh, chance for a third dog, an additional Dreadstalker in the four piece. Your Hand of Gul'dan has a 15% chance per Soul Shard spent to summon a Malicious Imp. So, uh, spoilers, I guess it's already half spoiled here. Uh, this tooltip reflects uh, what the actual change is, sort of. Two piece, no changes. This was so awesome to see because I love the third Dreadstalker. The two piece is still really strong. And it's probably still stronger than the four piece, which is a bit awkward, but it is what it is. I'll take it, right? Uh, the four piece changes. There's a lot to it here. So malicious imps no longer grant a demonic core charge. Okay. We weren't, I wasn't sure if that was the case, but I assumed it probably could have, probably was. Uh, and number two, they no longer grant a soul shard when slain or whenever they die. So the current thing with demonology on PTR right now is that malicious imps are, are, they have a basically a 100% chance to spawn whenever you cast a two plus shard hand of Gul'dan, which outside of your tyrant setup, you always cast three shard hand of Gul'dans. It's bugged. It has a 50% chance per soul shard spent to summon an imp, not five, like it currently is on PTR. Um, the change they've also made is making it a 15% chance. So the current four piece on PTR should be five. It displays five per soul shard spent. However, I can show you here as well. Um, it is 50 because it's bugged, but the demonology four pieces now change or it will change in next week's build to 15%. So realistically, when you're ever, when you're casting your three shard hand of Gul'dan's, here's the current one. You can see 5% here. When you're casting your three shard hand of Gul'dan's next week, it's going to essentially be a 45% chance to summon a malicious imp. Now that's actually sort of high. I, I'm, I'm fine with it. It's basically a one in two chance, right? Um, I'm okay with it. So they also changed a couple other things. Uh, note, malicious imps granting soul shards created a huge reliance on add-ons to maximize their potential, which is true. You'd want to have some way to track the actual malicious imp expiring to not use, you know, 
waste the shard essentially right rather than having value potentially lost the throughput of this set bonus has been moved to the malicious imps damage and uptime so uptime being this change here obviously right they also added this clause in here malicious imps on death damage has been increased by 388 percent you might be wondering what the actual damage is from malicious imps on death death uh let's take a look so here's our damage breakdown my damage breakdown from our heroic skull x uh, i think kill like weeks ago give or take so wild imp damage is not what you're looking for we're looking for malicious impact as far as warcraft logs are concerned now this combines both their doom bolt uh which is like their upon expiration effect they do to the target as well as their firebolt cast here uh this i might have imploded once i don't know why this is their implosion uh, effect so essentially doom bolt is what they buffed by 388 percent now that might seem like a lot it is to be fair it's basically 400 percent on top of a you know what 2.3 percent damage ability uh it'll be if things stay the same way they are in pcr uh what about 10 ish percent with rng and things factored in over your overall damage from one ability but keep in mind once again the four pieces bugged on ptr so you have a lot more malicious imp spawns which means a lot more doom bolt damage then you actually will when the set bonus goes live. Now, the actual sims for demonology are working properly. So keep in mind, 2.3 right here, roughly, Doom Bolt damage, right? And keep in mind here as well, Fell Fire Bolt being about 5.75. If we look at the actual breakdown with sims working properly, I got to find it in here. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, Vile Fiend, Vile Fiend. Malicious Imp, Fell Fire Bolt, 0.9%. So this fell firebolt being 0.9 in the sim versus 5.75 here so you can see how strong uh the bonus is in it's you know bugged state on ptr currently which is partially why demonology is looking better than it actually is on ptr doom bolt being 2.3 i hate to disappoint but doom bolt is uh somewhere in this yeah uh 0.4 percent of your damage uh, i guess of the you know imp damage it's, it's, it's actually the lowest uh, yeah, it's like the lowest percent overall damage dealt from its actual sim. Now, this has been increased by 400%. So you're looking at somewhere around 2%, I'd say, give or take, um, depending on spawn rates and things, right? Because it's probably actually more, to be fair. I don't think about this because they've increased the Doom Bolt damage by, you know, 400%. But in these sims, the imps are spawning with the 5% clause on Hand of Gul'dan's uh, actual proc chance, right? Versus 15, which is the change. So it's actually going to be more than two percent uh we'll see where it ends up landing but the imps have been buffed substantially so i, I would assume it's probably sort of close to the two piece probably still being a little better um but it's a big change now i have two other questions as well one being does it work with demonic consumption because we don't know if it's a bug or an oversight but they don't count towards decon and number two will the actual doom bolts and things count towards from the shadows because that currently doesn't work either so some questions they need to be answered here but i'm really excited to see demonology in play um and the more you think about it more and more starts coming uh, oh yeah there's this, this interaction that interaction it's really cool but i like shifting away from the soul shard demonic core dependency of the or i guess you know play style of the, of the four piece because there's a point you just can't spend shards fast enough i'm sitting on four demonic core stacks and i have two more coming in in two seconds and i'm, I'm at five shards like there it was just, it was excessive you were just losing value and you really couldn't do much so uh overall this will be a nerf to demonology when this is implemented it'll be a nerf to the demo you've seen in raid testing most likely uh, we will wait on sims i guess right but the demo in raid testing has been because of a huge bug in the four piece being really really good much better uh imp spawn rate it'll be better i think i mean i know than the current four piece in its fixed state in these actual sims here so we'll see where it goes i'm excited to test with it test with it play it see, see all that kind of stuff it looks cool uh okay destruction destro is the one spec out of the three that i think needed the most help um now you can read the feedback doc and all that stuff i said there's two ways they can take this number one they can overhaul it and um number two they can make it so that i, I like word for word this is what i said and to be fair a lot of people said it as well is that there needs to be some consistency in the two piece and the four piece needs to interact with rain of chaos I said the two piece needs to be after every X chaos bolts or in a fire cast or like after every X shard spent, you get a guaranteed proc of either bolt or rain of fire. And you can choose not this one procs, the other weirdness. It has to be guaranteed. No crazy RNG. 
and one or the other. So you can use it both in single target or Havoc Cleave or AOE. You have the choice, uh, you know, you have your own choice, right? And I wanted the four piece, if they wanted to keep it like that and not overhaul it, to interact with Reign of Chaos. Uh, or I said, hey, just overhaul it. And if given the option, like there's probably a lot of cooler things they could have done uh, with like, I don't know, Dark Soul interactions, uh, other Infernal interactions. But either way, I'm relatively happy with the changes. So two piece new every every 10 soul shards spent makes your next chaos bolt or rate of fire for you to cast so um the feedback we gave we being like on the forums uh and the discord and, and the document everywhere a lot of people have been saying something along these lines it's really cool to see that change made basically word for word what we said there's no rng anymore every 10 shards spent makes your next bolt or rate of fire cast free so you can like bank a proc maybe before heading into your infernal for more value We'll get to that in a little bit though super solid there's some gaming of this two piece you can definitely have for sure so you might be wondering okay is the four piece the same yes and no when rain of fire or chaos bolt is freely cast you summon a blast for me for eight seconds what is a blast for me you might ask uh yeah so four piece no longer summons a generic infernal but now summons a blast for me uh number one blizz if anybody watches this video please by the way please 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 make it this make the infernal this color make it a red infernal it'd be so sick make it a hellfire kind of like red glowing infernal it'd be so cool uh to separate them from each other but either way so a blasphemy um a blasphemy behaves as a normal reign of chaos infernal would so eight second duration this won't change tuning or numbers so yeah reign of chaos is the same but it's essentially a reign of chaos infernal which uh lasts i believe oh, i should know this i'm pretty sure it's eight seconds but i'm double guessing myself now um yeah, so that reign of chaos interaction is, you know, sort of there. Yeah, eight seconds. There you go. Right. Uh, yeah. So meaning if you're playing Roaring Blaze, for example, it will spawn an Infernal for eight seconds. It does not trigger reign of chaos if you're playing Roaring Blaze, but you'll still get an eight second Infernal, right? Uh, shard gen, all that. If a blast from me, meaning one of the Infernals is already active and would be summoned again. So somehow you're spending 10 shards with it within an eight second window, which Probably isn't going to happen unless you're playing Inferno Soul Conduit or in a heavy AOE build or like Lust and PIs. Its duration is extended instead and does impact damage at its current location. So I'm not sure if this means like the first Inferno doesn't impact damage. Uh, I, I assume it does, but it doesn't reset. It adds on like how VOP used to be for Destro in BFA. Uh, note, we're extending the duration rather than summoning an additional Blasphemies. Uh, blasphemies, that's a weird wording to make sure this bonus remains reasonable in terms of performance and readability the impact damage on extension is to ensure extending isn't about the impact damage on extension is to ensure extending isn't a value loss i actually didn't even read that so i guess uh they don't imp they don't do impact damage unless they extend okay either way it's whatever so i mean for the most part you're probably not gonna be proccing to that quickly unless you're like pooling shards going crazy but the cool thing here the interesting thing here Blasphemy grants Reign of Chaos if talented for its duration. So, uh, and a lot of bu bug fixes as well, which is cool. So this is very interesting because Reign of Chaos and Wilfrid's, this build here that I'm playing essentially, right? Uh, is actually relatively close to Cinders and Roaring Blaze, which is your typically your generic single target build. But with your four piece now being affected by Reign of Chaos, if you're talented into it, I would be surprised if this build, the Wilfred's Rain build, does not become the better two target spec. Or sorry, the better single target spec. The better universal spec. Now, I could be wrong. It's worth waiting for Sims. But just thinking out loud, right? So you've got a two minute Infernal, two minute ish Infernal, right? Which, to be fair, Infernal doesn't directly tie into your bonus here. They're separate from Bla like Blasphemy Infernal and regular Infernal. But when your Infernal's down, more shard gen. More shard gen every 10 shards spent. Blast me infernal. So that guarantees this bonus proccing more often, right? And getting that more that value more often, right? If you if you can save a like let's say you have you know seven shards spent, your infernal's off cooldown. Instead of just slamming your infernal on seven, cast another bolt, wait three seconds, get a proc, and then carry that proc into your actual infernal. So you go like infernal, CD, Stark Soul, cast the instant cast chaos bolt summon a blasphemy infernal which is like a reign of chaos infernal which i assume can maybe also proc another infernal in that rain window and it gets you more shards flowing early and it snowballs just faster and faster and faster and faster i don't see a world 
or that damage profile is better or worse than Roaring Blaze um, and, and, and Cinders, right? Now, two minute Infernals, um, Reign of Chaos, you still do get the four piece proc, the Blasphemy Inferno with Roaring Blaze, but you don't have the chance to proc multiple Infernals because you're not playing Reign of Chaos. So it's interesting to see them take this route. Um, I'm not against it, but it, it, yeah, it, the more I think about it, it's sort of interesting because it really pushes you into playing Reign of Chaos, which I mean, there's some RNG to it, but there's some give and take with this bonus too. I think you can maybe play it a little bit by saving your one proc, holding your Infernal for a second or two, maybe close, maybe like five, six seconds, get your proc, Infernal, Instant Cast Cast Bolt, Dark Soul, Blast Me, proc, go multiple Infernals and just chain it over and over and over, you know? Chaining it, you know, being both a mix of Reign of Chaos Infernals and Blast Me Infernals, whatever you want to call them. So it's pretty cool. A lot of potential here. And the big thing is that Destro with two minute Infernal feels like a different spec. It does. It's same as how AF was in 9.0 uh, before 9.1, when you had three minute Dark Lair and two minute Dark Soul. It was so clunky. Like you're, you're seeding on pull and two minute Dark Soul, three minute Dark Lair and weird like desyncing and stuff. And it all lines up, you know, 10 minutes later on. Two and two, two minute Infernal, two minute Dark Soul feels really good, especially with a like Ruby or their two minute base trinkets. So I'm happy with this change. I do think Destro still needs a buff. This change is good. It's consistent, but it won't make Destro good from where it's at now. It's probably one of the worst specs in the game damage wise right now. The two piece warpy changes are nice. Uh, it sounds cool toolkit wise, but in the end, you know, 8,000 times zero is still zero, right? It, it needs a damage buff. Uh, it'd be nice to have a chaos Bolt buff to be fair to work better with the two piece four piece, but overall a great step. Very good. It's much better to have, in my opinion, a good toolkit, a good tier bonus, and then be able to address class tuning later on if need be, because you don't see changes made to tier sets and things in the middle of, of a patch, but class tuning, and yeah, that comes, that happens. Um, hopefully sooner or later in the case of destruction and maybe affliction, but either way, I'm a fan. It's pretty cool. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I hope this video summarized the changes to Warlock two piece, four pieces for you and gave you a better idea of uh, I guess where we might stand heading into next week's PTR build. Now, like I said, I, I would have liked to have had these bonuses active for all of Mythic testing and things, but I'm a bit surprised Bliss is moving this fast with testing in the first place. And I wouldn't be surprised if they end up retesting Zymox today because it was sort of a bugged Fiesta and Lee Hoovim got canceled in the first place. So uh, it's cool to see them at least fixing them and not leaving us out in the cold like uh, I totally didn't think what happened at all, but yeah, it's cool to see the feedback being taken into account too, from the forums, from the doc, from discords, everywhere. It's cool to see. Uh, high hopes for Demonology 2-piece, 4-piece, uh, mainly 4-piece, here is the same. Destro 2-4 changes are nice. Consistency is good. There's, there's been some weird, like, fixation with RNG and chaotic energies with Destro from Blizz for a while. Like, I, I get the premise of it, but at the same time, that typically doesn't translate very well to actual prog settings and consistency is what people want, you know? And as far as AF concern, I wish they would have sort of addressed the PvP issues, but uh, for the most part, I'm okay with AF two piece, four piece, it's fine, solid. The drain soul increase is nice. Things could have been done a little differently with it. Maybe some changes made, but hey, you know, in the end, I'll take it. It uh, is what it is. So overall, I'm happy with it for the most part, good changes. Now we test and you know, we'll see what happens. So uh, once again, any questions or anything, uh, feel free to number one, swing by stream, and grab any weak ores at the same time if you want to, we can talk about there and or drop them down in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back to you. Also one more time, a huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys a million times for all support. Uh, heads up once again, the 9.2 Warlock tier, or sorry, tier three, good Lord. Um, the 9.2 Warlock spreadsheet should indeed be going live this weekend. Uh, the tier three Felga rank my patron higher does indeed get early access to that. Uh, if, if you're interested in supporting, there should be a link somewhere up here as well as down in the video description. So all that being said, thanks again for watching dudes and I will catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.